Welcome to the Page One Podcast, a podcast featuring a variety of guests and thought leaders on topics ranging from digital marketing, sales channel strategies, influencer marketing, best in class product launches, and all the details about how to accelerate sales. Now, here's your host, Luke Peters. Thanks for joining us on the Page One Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Peters, CEO of New Air Appliances and retail band Digital Strategy Agency. We're now in a coronavirus world, and I know that's on everyone's mind. So I'm going to adapt all of these interviews to ensure that you, the listeners, are getting the most out of this podcast. So we're going to get right to the important episode here. In this episode, you're going to learn from entrepreneur Kim Strassner, on how to bootstrap a business and make products right here in the USA, and also how Kim has just started a new business. And it's kind of related to the coronavirus problems we're having in this world. And she's kind of partnered with other companies. And we'll get into that and talk about that soon. Kim Strassner is co-founder of Words With Boards, an online gift shop that's redefining the art of thoughtful gift giving through its unique personalized product line. They're best known for their personalized cutting boards, which landed on Oprah's favorite things, uh, holiday list and list all consumer brands want to be on. Uh, Welcome to the show, Kim. Thank you. Happy to be here. Awesome. So I know we got a lot to talk about today with coronavirus and and, uh, how you guys are navigating that. But why don't you, you know, just quickly describe um, your key products at uh, Words With Boards. Yeah. So as you mentioned, we're best known for our personalized cutting boards, uh, which are all hand cut with a scroll saw. So a lot of the products out there that you see personalized are laser engraved. So we don't do that. Everything is hand cut with a scroll saw. And we have cutting boards and Lazy Susans and many other wooden home goods, all uh, made in the USA. All of our uh, products are sourced. All of our materials are sourced in the USA. All of our wood is sustainably forested. And we give a dollar uh, to which enables one tree planting in the U.S. So for every product sold, a tree is planted. Awesome. And so, so these are cutting boards. What's give us maybe your most popular product? What's the size of it, and and what is it? What differentiates it? What what special change have you made on it that's um, really engaging customers? Yeah. So they're personalized, and like I mentioned, they're all so the word. It's really hard to explain. It's more of a visual product because you probably haven't seen anything like it before. But we hand cut word, letters, names, whatever you want, um, out of butcher block, uh, either maple, cherry, or walnut wood. And um, so our most popular is our large, which is 12 and a half by 16. And they're pretty thick. They're all an inch and an eighth thick. Um, so it's a really nice, good, you know, solid, um, you know, cutting board or serving board. Uh, and, you know, people also, we've heard over and over, um, you know, they're so nice and they're personalized. So they keep them out on the countertop as display as almost, you know, decoration in the kitchen. That's awesome. And um, I'm sorry if this is obvious, but so they're personalized. You guys do sell in some boutique stores. Does that mean that you'll make some already ready cut models that are just have popular themes to them? Or is every single one going to be kind of personalized for the customer um, at point of sale or after, you know, they order a personalized version that's made and then shipped to them later? So we do have some non-personalized boards. Right now, a really popular one is Happy Hour. (laughs) It says Happy Hour on it. Or our bar board that says bar on it. So these are some popular ones, you know, right now. So we have a line of non-custom, non-custom boards. So at uh, boutique retailers, they carry those as well as they have one custom board that they display that they take orders from. Got it. That's awesome. Thanks for giving us that intro. And why don't we just jump into coronavirus? Talk to me a little bit how it's affected the business. I know we were chatting pre-podcast and you know March was a tough month, but then you guys, sounds like you guys really re- rebounded. So let's hear about that. Yeah, we did. So March, we were down probably 38% as it was March. And then April came along and we were up about 17%. So I think that you know, online sales, I think in general are up. Um, and we've, our products are mostly given as gifts. So a wedding gift, a shower gift this time of year, that's, you know, a real popular um, gift. And weddings were getting canceled, showers were already getting canceled, but they're all of a sudden people were getting very, um, you know, what can we do? Um, 
you know, the shower's canceled, but now we're going to do a drive-by shower, literally. So they, no, that's people, so cool. our customers are telling us, yeah, they're buying a personalized cutting board and then taking it to this drive-by shower. That's great. And what, through what sales channels are you seeing this now? Is this mostly through your um, D2C website or are you also seeing this with some of your other uh, sales channels? Yeah, so our direct, uh, our website, wordsbeforce.com, saw the biggest increase last month. Um, but we did, we're also on Zola.com, we're on the Gromit.com and UncommonGoods.com. And uh, towards the end of the month, we started seeing uh, more of an increase in those platforms. Um, but our biggest increase last month was direct to our website. Uh, that's great to hear. Now, is, you know, is this due to any special marketing efforts? Are you able to kind of share maybe what you've seen work in paid advertising or social media or anything in particular that's helped out? Yeah, you know, it's hard to pinpoint, isn't it? Um, we really don't do any paid advertising right now. Um, I, I did a lot of, I was doing a lot of work on our website, on the SEO part of our website and writing a lot of blogs and just doing a lot of SEO work at the beginning, towards the end of last year and the beginning of this year. And that really, I really saw the needle, you know, the needle jump on that. So as far as, you know, traffic to our website, and that kind of thing. So, you know, that probably helped us a little bit. Um, you know, the SEO work that I did a few months ago. And then we, you know, the end of February, which I know we'll talk about, we started another company. And really, I, I haven't done anything with Words With Boards. It's just people just found us and word of mouth. And we have a lot of repeat customers as well. Wow, that's great. Do you guys, um, what platform are you guys on? Is it, are you guys on Shopify or any of the larger platforms? We are in Shopify. Yeah, good for you. That that's it's so good to hear that. You know, there's a lot of stories of people having the challenging times now, and and you guys are um, succeeding. And I know we had talked uh, probably like about a month ago or so, mm -hmm. and uh, it was I think it was a different story then. So it's good to hear <laughs> the rebound. Um, and why don't you talk about the new business idea? So I can just kind of lay the the groundwork here. It sounds like you know, things were looking tough, like they were for everybody in March. And then you said, wow, I better get out and, and look for another opportunity. And you went and started a new business with some other business partners? Yeah. So my husband, actually, he was seeing online, you know, all these healthcare workers making masks. And this was in February. And so we went to um, a local company, uh, Jill Anders Downs. Jill is a couture dressmaker and also another local business, Dan with Imperium Shaving. And um, my husband and the two of them met and said, we need to do something. You know, there's, here's a need um, and we need to, you know, figure out how we can, you know, pivot. All of our companies are luxury brands. We make a luxury product. And, you know, at the time, sales were down and we were struggling. And so we said, you know, let's make hot masks. So within five days of them meeting, we had a website up. And um, so now we employ about 40 home sewers um, in the Baltimore area. And um, we just, you know, it's just grown, you know, as you can imagine, uh, with the CDC saying that everybody needs to wear a face mask. And then locally in Maryland, you know, there was the governor said everybody needs to wear a face mask if you're, you know, in a store or on public transportation. So, you know, we just really got this up and going at the perfect time. That is so cool. And, and talk a little bit about sales. Um, if Are you able to share kind of any type of volume or give, you know, the listeners an idea of what you've done? And then also, how have you generated those sales? Yeah, so we generated the sales through some press. So we were, we got some uh, a local magazine wrote about us and then a local TV station uh, did a, a story on us. Um, so definitely the press, uh, you know, the press that we received locally was a huge part of that. And, you know, in addition to, like I said, you know, the CDC and, and uh, the state of Maryland saying you have to have face masks. Our Mass. There's not many people, at least locally at the time, that were making non-medical, you know, organic cotton face masks. A lot of people were making them for the hospitals and the healthcare workers. You know, our niche was, you know, the individuals, you know, everyday people who also needed a mask. 
And so we filled a niche that nobody else was filling at the time. That's awesome. And so has this venture, I mean, has it, has it actually, you know, is it, I know you're doing something that's helpful and you're selling some masks, but how about just economically? Has it been something that's going to, that's generating some cash for you guys, or is it maybe not there yet, but you, you think it could be in the future? Yeah, no, it, it is definitely um, generating income. I mean, it's, you know, split three ways, um, but it is definitely generating income, um, you know, profitable. Um, you know, we are also donating masks as well um, to some community organizations. So that's part of it, you know, giving back to the community, uh, which we're all, you know, very much in our DNA to do. So, but no, it's very profitable. Um, and, you know, we we grew so quickly. I mean, within I think three weeks, we were at um, you know a hundred thousand dollars in sales. Oh, that's so awesome! That's great. Yeah, I, last month is a complete blur. Yeah. <laughs> just with with starting this new company, and then on top of it, you know, we're we're just up seventeen percent. So it's been you know it's been some good times. Yeah, well, good for you. Congratulations. That is, I mean, that that's a real number. That's awesome. And also to do it so quickly. So yeah. it sounds like um, you've diversified your income streams and a lot of good things about that. Cool. So let's, let's move on more about your company kind of before we get into, I, want, I really want to learn how, you know, your other marketplaces are doing, say from the grommet to anywhere else you might be selling. Before we get to that, can you give the listeners a quick breakdown just on the business overall? Um, where are you operating kind of the footprint and, you know, number of um, total staff that would be helpful to understand? Sure. So our um, wood shop and studio is located in um, Baltimore City in Maryland. And uh, we are a little bit seasonal. So during November, December, we probably have about 10 employees. And then we scale that back to about six employees throughout the rest of the year. Uh, and we also, uh, we have one autistic adult that we, that we employ as well. Um, and so we have, you know, people who cut the boards, we have people who stand the boards, we have people who help with packing and shipping. And then, it's, and then it's my husband. Okay. Thanks a lot for that, Kim. And then can you also fill us in kind of on the sales mix? So you're talking about the grommet earlier. Um, are you able to give us a percentage of sales, say from your website um, versus what you're selling elsewhere on the internet? Yes. Yeah, so we're probably, it's probably 60% direct to our website and 40% uh, with other like the Gromit, Uncommon Goods, and those are, and Zola are probably the three bigger ones. Um, so, and, but that mix does shift from year to year. Um, you know, I mean, we're trying to get more obviously direct to website sales, uh, but, you know, we do love our relationship with the Gromit and Uncommon Goods as well. Yeah. And again, it's good to have diversified. And how long have you been selling? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When, when was your website created? So how long has the business really been operational and functional? So we've been in business seven years since 2013. That's great. And why don't we talk about PR? How has that helped your brand? I know, you know, you, you got some probably amazing PR from Oprah. Um, it'd be great to kind of hear the story or anything you, specific you can share about that. Yeah, PR has been a big reason why um, we, why, why our web sales are what they are. And so it first started out, it, we got in the hands of Martha Stewart originally. Oh, wow. And yeah, we were on her um, on her website. And at the time, she had an American-made store on eBay, which we were part of. Um, and so that really gave us credibility. It didn't really translate much into sales, but the credibility piece was priceless for us. Um, because that was early on. That was probably like 20, you know, 20, end of 2013, 2014. And then, so after Martha Stewart, then we were, um, we got into Uncommon Goods. And, you know, that was a huge part of our sales early on. And then we um, got into the hands of, of Oprah. And we ended up on her holiday list 2015, which was, huge. Um, it really took our business to the next level. And we really haven't looked back since then. Um, and so, I mean, even to this day, we still get orders. And then when I'm able to ask customers where they heard about us, some people say, oh, you were on Oprah's favorite things list. 
so, you know, how many years later, you know, three years later, it, it's still, it's still a force <laughs> to no, be reckoned with. And then also the other PR that we've gotten is on national and national, um, you know, holiday gift guides are big for us too. Um, you know, those are, those are always helpful. And I've done a combination of hired PR agencies and done PR on my own. Um, the PR I've done on my own, uh, which was Martha Stewart and Oprah, the big one, um, that definitely generated, you know, generated the most publicity and sales versus hiring a PR agency. So, you know, it's kind of interesting. I, you know, I hire an agency because I don't have the time, but really, you know, when I do it, that's when I get the best results. Well, unfortunately, that happens all the time with entrepreneurs. Too bad. It's too bad we don't have, you know, six heads and 12 arms, but (laughs) eventually (laughs) you get to a point where you got to have someone else do it. But yeah, it's not the first time I've, I've heard someone tell me that. Yeah. Talk about being, you know, an autism friendly employer. I'd love to know, you know, what that means, what, what you've learned, how that's affected you. Yeah. So when we moved into our wood shop and studio in 2015, uh, there was a local company within walking distance to us and they were, um, you know, the name of them is itinerist. And so they have autistic adults that come to them and spend the day with them. And some of these adults are able to work outside of, um, you know, outside of itinerous and outside of the home. So we were able to partner with them and, um, and hire an autistic adult. And he comes in and helps us with the packaging. So he makes our boxes and he does our, um, you know, any of the, anything around the packaging. He even makes like our mineral oil bottles and, um, you know, does stuff in the wood shop, not nothing related to equipment, but like he'll vacuum the wood shop. So lots of different, you know, lots of different things. And they are just um, the best employees, really. They always show up on time. They always show up. And not that we've really had a problem with that, but they are very focused. You know, you give them a task to do and that's what they do. You know, they, you all, you, I all, all often have to say, you know, can you, you need to take a break? Can you, do you want some water? Do you need to go to the bathroom? You know, because they're very focused on their job. Yeah. That's gotta be really rewarding too. That that's a cool story. And, and then in, in addition to that, you know, you have a sustainable business model. You kind of talked about that earlier. One product is, is sold as one tree planted. Um, and, and, and then you also, I think, um, just in some back and forth writing that we had mentioned that you have to be really truthful and authentic as you'll call it, you'll get called out on it if you're kind of overemphasizing it, but I'd love for you to share, you know, what other businesses can learn from this, how's it, how it has helped in marketing and just, uh, in branding of your company. Yeah. I mean, this is something that was really important to my husband and I early on just to give back in any way that we can. So it was really done, you know, not so much because, um, you know, it's the thing to do right now. I mean, you know, it was done because it's really something that we believe in and we believe in the environment and, you know, doing what we can for the environment. So, you know, and we were a wood, we're a wood product. And so it makes sense to plant a tree. Um, you know, and then the wood that we buy is all sustainably forested, which means more is planted than what is torn down. And, and because our products are butcher block, you know, the butcher block material that you use, the wood that you use to butcher block a board is really mostly, um, you know, stuff that would be thrown away, you know, because it's smaller pieces, you know, because you're, you're gluing together small pieces. Right. And the reason why you do that for a cutting board is that so it doesn't warp, you know. So, yeah, I mean, it just makes sense. So it's every product sold through our website, you know, we plant a tree and, um, you know, I mean, I don't know if that has really, you know, made us have more sales because we do that. I just think that it was just something important to my husband and I. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it fits in with a lot of the other things you're doing. So, you know, American made and just a lot of the other trends right. and, and maybe the authenticity, I'm sure that really helps out with the brand. So probably helps out more than you, than, you know, um, yeah. yeah, no, this is, yeah. listen, really enjoyed getting to, you know, talk to you a second time here and also getting to hear about the new developments with the business that you started. And I guess, you know, before I let you go here, um, you know, you've shared a lot about your business. What's maybe the best practical, practical bit of advice you can give other entrepreneurs, you know, to, to successfully make it through this COVID-19 situation that we're all in? Wow. Um, 
Um, I, you know, I think that, again, being authentic, being in communication with your customers is key right now. You know, if you are still making and shipping, you know, you need to let them know that. Um, you know, if you're, you know, if you're pivoting like we are, you know, you need to let them know that. And just, you know, I, I think just be authentic and truthful and, and tell them exactly, you know, what you're going through. And also, you know, for us, we have started back um, having our employees come back, but we're doing it in a way that we're not all there at the same time. So, you know, somebody co- comes early in the morning, you know, and then we wipe everything down and then we come in and then we wipe everything down and then our, our sandal comes in, you know, at night and then we wipe everything down. So, you know, just being really careful and having staggering work shifts, um, you know, is what works for us. Well, listen. Um, you got a couple of businesses now, so you got more than you uh, than than you probably were thinking was going to happen the last couple of months. And it's cool that you're succeeding with the new business and and your existing business with um, words with boards. So, congratulations! Um, really enjoyed having you here on the podcast. How can listeners uh, get a hold of you or find more about you? Yeah. So, um, if you're looking for a really awesome guest. Um, either for a personal gift or for a corporate gift, you can go to wordswithboards.com. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn at Kim, Kim Strassner. At wordswithboards is um, can we can be found on social media. And then our mask company is qualitymasksupply.com. Great. And we'll have all this in the show notes. And again, want to thank you again, Kim, for being on the Page One Podcast sponsored by Retail Band. And hope everybody has enjoyed the interview today. Truly appreciate your reviews on iTunes and hope you join us for the next interview. Take care. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Page One Podcast with Luke Peters. If you enjoyed this episode, please help us out by leaving us a rating on iTunes. Want to double your online sales? Check out www.retailband.com. And don't forget to join us next week with our next amazing guest.